Okay, so the next patterns that we're going to cover are patterns that allow instantiation and inheritance. Now, those are some big words if you're not used to them. Instantiation just means we want to be able to make multiple copies of this object. We want to create a module once and then make many copies of it. You see things like this, um, say Pinterest. Every pin as you scroll down is probably using the same logic. Um, you don't have a billion revealing modules, all with different names for each pin. Uh, you've probably created one module that's a pin module, and then you're creating multiple pins from that. Same kind of thing if you're scrolling through a list of friends on Facebook. You know, you have a follow button for each friend. You have an ignore or a, you know, block or an unfriend button. And so you write all that functionality in one module. And then you can create a bunch of different copies of that. That's called instantiation because you're making a bunch of instances of one thing. So instantiation instances. Um, and then also with this is inheritance. And we'll cover that a little bit later. So there's several patterns for instantiation and inheritance. We'll cover those. There's pretty much the two common ones are classical and prototypal. Um, there absolutely is the concept of classes in JavaScript. It just looks a little different than, you know, class extends some other class like you'd see in most languages. Uh, so that is in JavaScript and that's basically what we're going to be covering. So lots of times people will call something prototypal and they're really meaning classical because this is its own kind of slightly tweaked way of doing classical inheritance. But for this video, we'll be covering classical. In the next video, I'll show you the difference. So basically to do inheritance, uh, you'll do something like this. Let's say we'll take the Facebook example. Let's go ver person, and you're going to want to make it an uppercase. You know, it's going to be a capitalized. And the reason is it's a constructor. This is not a actual running module. This is the master module that will create all of our modules. So the the absolutely normally standard usage is that you're going to capitalize the name of a constructor. So this is going to be a function. So this is basically our class. If you want to think of it as this, this is our class. It's not an instance of a class, but this is our class. And then later on, you can go ver John equals new person. Okay, so there we go. Now we've made a class. It's a function. And then down here is a copy or a creation. I can also then go ver Bobby equals new person. So now I've created a John person and a Bobby person with basically no functionality. So let's actually add some features to this module now. Let's say when we create a new person, well, we got to give them a name. Uh, so there's John and there's Bobby. And then this actually receives a name. And so within this function, so when you, when you do new, um, basically this function is going to run. And then it's going to return an object. And so within function, the, the keyword this refers to the object that you're creating right now. So when I'm doing new person, this is equal to John that I'm about to make. And then new person Bobby, this is equal to Bobby. So basically if I say this.name equals name, well now John.name is John, Bobby.name is Bobby. So later down here, I say alerts, gotta love those alerts, John.name, well that's going to alert John. So there we go, that's how that works. Um, and let's go ahead and now add some functionality to this. So we go uh, person. So when I did this real quick, basically when you create a constructor, then it has it creates what's called a prototype for you. So person.prototype. And this is what always scared me. This is, this is the pattern that I stayed away from when I was learning JavaScript because there were just words that kind of freaked me out. Things like prototype. Okay, that sounds really weird. I'm going to stay away from this pattern for a while. I'm going to stick to revealing modules for a while because it feels comfortable. Uh, if you get over the weird word, you'll actually find that this is just as easy as any other pattern. Um, so basically, this got created automatically. An empty object. Person prototype. So nothing is really on it, but that basically got created when you created a person. So we can actually add new things to that now after we've created person. I can go person.prototype. Nope, that didn't fill in right. Person.prototype, say name. And let's make that a function. So this is basically like it's a method. So now say name, let's say we're just going to console log this.name. And that's all that is. So now John has access to say name and Bobby has access to say name 
because they're on the prototype. If you think of it like this, here's the module up here. This is where I'm defining the actual module. And down here I'm creating all copies of the module. So now I can go John.sayName and that's going to console log John. Let's actually do something like this. I'm, my name is, there you go. So now it's going to say, hi, my name is John. And I'm actually going to say it like that. So let's make sure we add a space. There we go. And then if I say Bobby.sayName, then it's going to say, hi, my name is Bobby. And then if I were to change John's name, name, then I could do John say name and it'd say, hi, my name is Johnny. Bobby remains completely unchanged. So that now we've basically created some shared functionality. Uh, now we can do, let's do shout name. Hi, my name is, and then let's add an exclamation at the end. There you go. So then Bobby can shout his name if he wants. That's going to say, hi, my name is Bobby. So um, that's basically how you create your module. So now let's go ahead and look at inheritance with this pattern. So what does inheritance look like? We've done instantiation. Uh, this is how you create instances. Let's say we want to create a certain type of person now. And that certain type of person, we can create multiple kinds of those. So say there's people on Facebook, but then there's also friends on Facebook. So let's say, let's make a very friend. And that friend will have functionality that the person doesn't. Uh, so once again, uppercase, because friend is the module, friend is not the actual uh, instance. This is the module. This is the constructor. So now we're going to make friend. And now we need some sort of inheritance function. Uh, and I like to use to snatch nodes one. If you were to look at, I'll give you this link in the description. Node.js gives you one called inherits. And so I just usually snatch this function right here. Let's go ahead and steal that. And so I'm going to, where should I put this? I'll just put it all the way at the top. Function inherits, and you give it the child, and then you give it the parent. And you can look in this and see if you understand it later on. That's basically just going to allow our child to inherit all of the functionality from the parent. So this is our very generic person module. They can all say their name and shout their name. And a friend can maybe, I don't know, unfriend you or something like you can unfriend them. So we've created our friend function. That's our first step. And now we want to inherit all the people methods. So I'm just going to go inherits. And then which one was first? Okay, there we go, construct. So friend is going to inherit from person. There we go. So now any friend can say name and shout name as well. So if I were to say Ver Julia, then Julia has say name. She has that functionality. However, her name is not being saved right now. So here's the other thing that kept me away. As soon as the concept of inheritance came in, that's where I really started avoiding the prototypal pattern for a while, or the classical pattern. Any kind of instantiable, inheritable patterns, I, just, I didn't like those at this point because it just seemed kind of freaky to me. And basically what we want to do is we want to run this on our friend object that we're creating. So we want to be able to, you know, usually a, a constructor does a little bit more than just assign name. We could easily just say, you know, fr friend gets a name and then this name is name. But then what if you change? What if you start doing something like this, like name to lowercase? We're going to make sure name is always lowercase. Well, now we have to remember everybody. Now we have to change that here too. That's a bad pattern. We don't want to have to do that, especially if there's a lot of logic happening up here in this constructor. We don't want to have to duplicate that anywhere. That's a bad pattern. So we want to run this person function against the new friend object that we are creating. So how you do that is very simple. You simply say person dot, because remember person is a function. Uh, we go person call this, which is what we're building now, and we pass in the name. So that's going to now run this exact person thing, but instead of running it against a new person object, we're going to run it against our new friend object. So there we go. That runs our super. So now name is associated. And if you look at inherits, it actually is going to add this super pointer right here. So this is friend. 
this is person. So friend dot super underscore is actually person. So I can run friend dot super call this. So that's a little cleaner, just so we don't have to remember that our, you know, we don't have to remember that we inherited from person. So uh, there we go. And then we are going to also, let's say a friend also gets, um, let's change friend to musician. Let's forget the whole friend module. Musician will be a little easy. Musician gets an instrument. And Julia will play trombone. So there you go. We're now allowing our super class, our inherited class constructor to set the name. And then we're setting the instrument. And then we inherit. And now we can go ahead and add some own methods, some, own fu some new functionality for our musician class. So the musician class, we want to be able to get the instrument. Musician dot get instrument equals, and we'll just console log again, this dot instrument. Keep it simple. So there we go. Now Julia can say her name. That's going to do Julia. Julia can get instrument. And then what we can also do is we can actually override uh, the say name functionality. Say a musician, we want to be able to say the name, but we want to shout differently because musicians, after all, shout just a little more unusually. So shout name equals oh, prototype, sorry. There we go. This will actually be, dude. My name is this dot name. And then way too many exclamations. There you go. So now when I say shout name, it's going to basically do what happens with scoping. Is it's going to look first of all in my own object, which is musician. That's the module Julia is right now. So it's going to say, hey, do I have a shout name? Like when Julia says say name, it looks first in Julia for say name. Do we have a say name? No, we don't. Okay, let's look up to the parent module. Do we have a say name? Yes. Okay, let's run this one instead. So that's what's happening there. So when you say shout name, exact same thing. Let's look for shout name. Okay, we have it. Basically, I, I will never access person.shout name as long as musician shout name exists. So when I say this, Julia's going to go, dude. My name, yeah, 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 yeah. She's going to shout it. So now later on in my program, you usually don't want to do this, but I could go musician, I could go delete. Shout name. I'm going to delete that function. I'm going to delete that method altogether. And now Julia can shout name. And instead of being undefined, this is now gone. Poof. It's going to look up the chain and see, oh, shout name. And it's just going to do a normal shout name. So that's kind of how inheritance works with JavaScript. That's what you're going to do. Really all you need code wise is to either quickly learn how to type one of these yourself or just go copy paste one. It's not that big of a deal. It's very easy to get yourself. I'm just showing you where this node one is so you can go grab it in case you forget what's going on here. So that's classical inheritance. In this next video, let's look at prototypal inheritance.